Hello, AOS fans! It's the agents of Nordvolt. And we're back for what we hope will be a regular series of kind of uh, talking heads, or well, they would be talking yes. heads if we actually had heads in the picture. But, uh, but they are talking. discussion points of Night Vault, Shade Spire, anything really we want to talk about. Yeah. Uh, and anything you might want to listen to. Um, so this is the first one, and obviously Night Vault is on the verge of coming out. Uh, but I think people just get this video out before possibly, possibly. Night Vault is released. Yep. Um, I've been uh, fed him some extra biscuits, so hopefully he'll be able to get them done. Um, but we're going to go through the uh, article that appeared on the Warhammer community website on the 25th of September, yes. uh, which is Warhammer Underworld's top tips for classic warbands. This basically is going to try and beef up the old warbands to show you that they're just as good as the new ones. Yeah, you don't have to worry about that magic. It's not the be-all and end-all. There's plenty of tricks and tips that you can follow for your old people just to keep them up to scratch. But is there? Yeah. Pete and I, and we're, to be fair, we're not the only ones, uh, have noticed that this uh, article is a little bit lacking, although it does have one or two surprises inside it. So we're just going to run through it, talk about it, and say what we think about it, really. Um, and, you know, do ch chip in in the comments below if you've got any thoughts, or if you haven't read the article, go find it, read it, and let us know what you think. Uh, but we think it's uh, put the cat among the pigeons, but it's sort of half-dead cat and possibly some rabid pigeons. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, anyway, think without further ado... It doesn't stand much chance here. <laughs> yeah, so here we go. So the first one in the list was good old Garrick. Hey, good old Garrick, with his show scorn to sorcery. sorcery. Now, the article itself says, uh, one really cool card to add to your decks in this expansion is Blood Rain. Now, personally, Blood Rain was a cool card to have anyway because it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, this card causes all attack actions in the activation after it's played count as having fury, which, news to me, but that's the swords. Ne <laughs> no, exactly. So that's <laughs> the first that. thing about the Garrett Reavers. It's uh, got a name. Is, uh, the swords are fury, which I, had, fury. I never knew. That's the first thing. I think there are three things of there note, note in, this yeah, article, yeah. in this section alone. Uh, this has the knock-on effect of making magic attacks impossible. 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 As the magic dice don't feature a fury symbol. They don't. They do not. They have lightning bolts and swirlies and, and crits. crits. By taking this in your deck, you'll be able to turn cowardly sorceries aside with ease. Now, there's a problem with this. Uh, crits still work. So they kind of completely missed that, and they say it's impossible. It's not impossible. It's I mean, not it's, impossible. It's, it's it less possible, yeah. but it's not impossible. Less possible. It's improbable. Inconceivable. And it would, I mean, I have to say, it would turn sorceries aside with ease, I think. I think you, would, you wouldn't use it that turn. Yes. But actually, so far, it's a bit naff anyway, because the sorcery uh, attack, like the formination attack, formination. is actually quite hard to hit with, because it's two swirls. You need, two, you yeah, need yeah. two swirls, and you haven't got anything to give you a um, Yeah, innate. there's no innate. You haven't got an innate for swirlies yet. No. So it's interesting that this does affect spells, because um, the card itself says all attack actions. Now, I wouldn't have thought it maybe would be cast, but I guess it, it must do, because you do have spell attacks. Yeah. yeah, so this card, it's not the best suggestion, and it certainly doesn't make it impossible by any stretch. No. And it's the, a good card anyway. There is something interesting about this card, Pete, and uh, that is yes. that it says it's number 127 out of 557, ah! meaning the card in that picture is going to be from the Night Vault yep. set. You can even see that there's the little Night Vault symbol so above that So it already exists well. in Shadespire, and it's going to exist in uh, Night Vault, which means they're going to reprint it I don't really like that. No, I, I'm. The jury's out for me. I can see if they're gonna if they're gonna discontinue the Shades Bar box, which I assume they are, because Night Vault is gonna be the new core set. Yeah. They are still gonna want to sell and use. Uh, Garrick Severin and, Severin, and, Gavri yeah. and Garrick Gavrin <laughs> Gavrin and Severick Gavrin and Severick yeah. and they've also therefore got to make them as warband boxes now if they put all of the cards in with existing other existing Shadespire cards so you get a box of each and they've all got cards that we've already owned yeah. that's fine by me because I own everything in those boxes and I won't have to buy them yeah. and that's just fine and nobody's getting a particular advantage if you haven't bought them you buy them absolutely that's fine yeah. they can't sell the core cards because they've already printed those in the Night Vault set so they're not going to do a whole objective one, two, three four and five no, so true. they're going to have to be boxes with different cards in and if they're old cards that's fine if they're new cards then I have an objection because I don't want to buy Severin and Garrick again no. and I, if they have new neutrals in it that would be very very annoying I'm hoping like you say that it's just some generic neutrals bit like your great strength or whatever things that aren't that particularly mind blowing. Well, I'm not even sure they'd be necessarily gener generic ones. They might be things like ready for action uh, yeah. and the sort of the, the core cards from Shade Spire that appear in most decks. Possibly. Core's the wrong word. You know, but yeah. just cards. So those kind of ones, people say, oh, well, you, know, oh, you need to buy this, you need to buy the Fast Riders deck for this one, you need to buy the whatever deck for that one. Yeah. If they were all in those two boxes and so people were catching up the game, could just buy those two and be sorted. That would be very nice thing to do. Yeah. 
So I suspect uh, yeah. they possibly won't because that'll be cutting their nose off in regards to some sales. Maybe. If you put but all the best cards in two boxes, people aren't going to buy the other boxes for the most part. They'll buy one or two. They're not going to buy play. the old boxes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you, but yeah. I just kind of feel, you know, because looking forward, there's going to be new brilliant cards that in, all, in all the eight war beds. So you're, if you're if you're still looking, you're asking people to buy 16 war beds, I think people might balk at that anyway. Yeah, that is true. That is true. So I don't know. But yes, I will be irritated if they have new neutrals in, yeah. the, in those. Because we're all going to have to buy Garrick and Severin again. Yeah. And none of us want to have to do that. If no, we exactly. And get duplicates of cards like Blood Rain, which I don't, you know, I don't want yeah. two Blood Rains because I can't yeah. use them. So there we go. That's the first one down and out of the way. Um, and it does. Sorry, you say that, but I've just occurred to me that would also answer what's going to happen to my to the extra hundred and twenty cards. Well, it would it'd be it'd a Severin box and a Garrett box. Yeah, sixty each. of each. Yeah, yeah. that'd be so, a Severin and a Garrett. So no box. magic deck. Oh. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Okay, who's next? So the next one up is Spike Claw Swarm. Come on, what it says. What does it say, Pete? So it says, as gamut spells aren't ploys, getting chosen by one won't inspire your fighters. So, more often than not, you'll have to take matters into your own paws. Uh, if you haven't already picked up confusion, as well as being a handy card to reposition your fighters, it can be used to choose two and thus inspire two at the same time. Well, no sh- Sherlock. <laughs> uh, confusion is really good for, uh, for, for the spot. If you didn't know that already, you're probably playing the wrong game. Um, I mean, there is a, they do make a small point there, which is that... Gambit spells are ga- ploys. Yeah, so... But, to be honest, who, which self-respected Skaven player would rely on their opponent yeah, to, exactly. to inspire their Skaven? And so a lot I of think, them, like um, Lightning, uh, Chain Lightning, you don't choose targets no, anyway. A lot true, of them no. just do a thing and it yeah. does something. It's just, so. I know they've got less cards, but yes, it's... Yeah, Skaven are going to be relying on their own cards right, anyway, right, right, yeah. and and they're all, and there's not a Skaven player sitting there going two of them. <laughs> yeah. I never thought of that. Right, exactly. No, exactly. it's been asked on the forums about a million times, <laughs> but it's just. But yeah. can you use it with earthquake? That's why I'm right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So the next one is the Far Striders. Watch far your surroundings. Bo- yes, watch your surroundings. Now this, I'm not even going to bother reading this all out. This basically <laughs> says, uh, if you have trouble looking at the board and working out where the block hexes are, buy the scenery, because then it'd be much more obvious. It's only 30 quid. Well, well, there you go. It, it, is, or it is more obvious, uh, but you know that is the worst, uh, most obvious sales tactic I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, in AOS and 40k, terrain matters, yeah. and it looks nice, no. and you do want to buy it, and most GW terrain is sexy as heck. Yeah. But... I just, well, they do. It does look great, but to suggest that you need to buy it so you can play the fast drivers is, 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 is laughable, really. It's a really. pretty weak, tenuous suggestion at it best. Is. And moving on to the Iron Skulls, to be honest, the Iron Skull suggestion is, is you know, that's fairly reasonable. I think, isn't it just basically uh, uh, there are more lethal to, hexes? Run into the lethal hexes. To inspire. Yeah, I mean, that's a reasonable suggestion. But, I, I but really got one it. that I think all Oryx players already yeah. had in their top they five did. plays. Exactly, they did. Um, now, bear in mind, this is aimed at people who are brand new, yeah. who are coming Please. from Nightfall. So there is that, but at the same time, all the Shade Spy players are certainly going, yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, it does say for your classic warbads. It, it does. Already, you already have them. Fiends, what does it say for Fiends? Murder more innovatively. Oh, yeah, there's more cards that can kill things. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, it's basically saying use cards like Horrifying Howl and Shake About oh, to pull people lethal through hexes. lethal hexes yeah. and things like that. It's very situational. Very situational. If your opponent doesn't actually pick a ball with lethal hexes on, if you're Magor, you're probably running into their side anyway. Yeah. So the chances of you actually being able to take advantage of lethal hexes are slim. I so, guess so. Still hearts champions. Well, you know, take a potion. that They'll stop you dying. Well, that's true. That is true. But again, you know... To be honest, I haven't seen a healing potion play for quite some time. We've not played healing no. potions for a while, it doesn't, normally. It doesn't, it doesn't make the cut. No, there's just too many other ploys that are handy, I think. There are. I can't, I, yeah, I just can't see a heal, of... You could smack someone in the face, someone in the face again with my turn or ready for action. That is part oh. of it. People have become... The cards have made the warband so much more offensive now yeah, yeah. That, that playing defensively can be really hard to pull off because mm. you don't get the time Getting to actually one take the back. healing potion. And getting one wound back isn't that big getting a deal. Getting one wound back ahead of dealing three or four out yourself is not. Exactly, yeah. it doesn't pay off, does it? No. So there we go. And for the chosen axes. Now the chosen axes is my favourite. I really like the chosen axes. The most exciting change of the chosen axes in the new season is a host of powerful new upgrade cards. With most popular strategies revolving around using full Grimnia, you'll be able to try all sorts of deadly builds for this indomitable Dwardin. Do you want to turn him into a lightning fast slayer and remove a dragon or choose your upgrades carefully? So basically. They have nothing to suggest. Nothing. They Zero. You can get some cards which might do something to him to make him different to the way he was. There's nothing to suggest for it him. It also says, 
that the new season has a host of powerful new upgrade cards. I don't remember how <laughs> many of the cards in the core box currently are generic for everybody, five. but none of them are particularly sexy. There are five. None of them, yeah. none of them well, power there's, upgrade there's, there's great speed, great strength. Oh, yeah, yeah great, we've already got those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there's not really anything in there for them. There might be yeah. in, a, Later, in, a, yeah, in a couple yeah. more warbands' time, but, maybe, the moment, but right now, no. no, there isn't anything. No, no. So what they're basically saying is keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, basically. <laughs> basically. Now, the Sepulchral Guard. Now, this, now, this is, is the, the one that did make people yeah. go, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it says the Sepulchral Guard have received a huge improvement in the new expansion thanks to the new system of move and charge tokens. It's a simple change to the core rules, and it says that when you're moving and charging, it's tracked through the tokens now, and not through the actions that the person has made. So we, to start with, were sitting there going, there's nothing in the rules to suggest this, we couldn't find this anywhere. And then we went back and looked at the old rules. So in the old rules, it says... A fighter that makes a move action cannot make another move action or a charge action in that action phase. Play, place a move token next to them as a reminder. So it very much stresses that it's a reminder that you can't. It's a and reminder, it, yes. And it very much stresses that a fighter that makes a move action cannot make another move yeah. action. So if you died, you'd already made a move action, you can't make you another can't one. Work. And but that's now, where the confusion in the FAQ came about. The FAQ was saying, whilst you take the tokens away, the tokens are just reminders. Yes. And you and don't... You don't. Very specifically, if you've come back, you've still made a move action, so you can't do another one. Exactly. And, I th- and that, it says that in the FAQ, and I actually originally thought, well, it says that in the FAQ, and it doesn't say anything in the, in the rules, but yes. if you read the rules carefully, the, the rules, new rules, so this is the Night Vault rules so now. In the, in the Night Vault rules, it very specifically says in the move actions, at the very, at the very end of the move actions paragraph, when a fighter completes a move action, place a move token next to them. A fighter with one or more move tokens cannot make another move action or charge action in that action phase. And of course, when you die, when you're out of action, you take off the move tokens, as it says that in the rules, Pete. Yep. Once a fighter has a number of wound tokens on their fighter card equal to or greater than their wounds characteristic, they are taken out of action, remove them and their tokens from the battlefield, and clear all tokens from their fighter card. So they're all gone. So all the tokens are gone. Yes. And basically, you can now... Charge again when you come yeah. back if you're resurrected. So if you resurrect them, you yeah. can you can then charge with them or move with them. Um, and it, there are some cards which kind of explains this now because in a few cases it says things like if they have one or more tokens or remove yeah. the move. I think there's a there's one of the leader cards says something about re- remove the move token from them. Uh, okay. So and in the old rules, you're like, well, does that mean they can move again now? But in the new rules, that makes they more can, sense because they, they again, are yeah. actually using the tokens. So there we go. That's a, that a very small wording difference. Mm. Very easy to miss because you're not. Ninety nine percent of us aren't going to sit here and reread every paragraph. No, of this we rules. didn't. And I have to shout out to Simon there because he asked that question with that kind of that he in did. mind, and Sorry, we Simon. didn't notice it. But it is buried Sorry, Simon. quite deeply, Very. deeply within. So, we, but we did miss it, um, and that, that's a big difference. But what I, I slightly, if not objective, is the wrong word. Um, is of course not only does it apply to the sepulchral guard, it also applies to the already very strong Skaven. And probably benefits them at least as much. I'm not sure. I wouldn't say necessarily, if not more, but at least as much. At least as much, So yes. they, and it doesn't even mention that in here, in the article. <laughs> and and they, so they've got a massive boost, which I'm not sure they needed. That is, a, yeah, that is a potential question mark, is did the scape need to be any stronger? Because we do know that there are players out there, John, who rock the Skaven and do win a lot of glass with them. Did they need this? I mean, I can very, very easily see now people taking... A Skaven putting loads of damaging upgrades on, demonic like weapon. Um, demonic weapon or um, Black Hunger and mm. Hero Slayer and stuff yeah, like yeah. that, charging it right to the middle and then getting killed and coming back and charging again. Mm. I guess the key to get around this is if your opponent is packing Skaven or Sepulchral Guard and he charges with somebody, don't kill him, don't go after them. Your opponent might try and position them cleverly to put them on objectives and things like that, which might force you to try and shift them or kill them but if you don't have to just don't target them yeah I mean they have got a lot of other people to target I suppose but yeah. it is very powerful and people you know people oh definitely yeah yes. I think it's uh, yeah yeah. I however say. that is a that is literally a, a one sentence change which does have fairly large ramifications it does go completely against what the FAQ said and is very different to how it was tracked before hmm. so when you get your rules make sure you read them all yeah, but well, interestingly, I'm gonna, gonna, still going to have to do a new FAQ because the FAQ is still very. If if, if that FAQ remains intact, then well, the rules it, it now contradicts it. Contra- yeah, so they're going to have to go through the FAQ 
keep the bits which are just explan not even really FAQs, but just explanations mm -hmm. of the rules in slightly more detail, and then get rid of all the bits that. that because as it stands, can't. the FAQ actually says if you bring the bet and they have already charged, then they can't. Yeah. So, so so they need to change that before this game hits the shops. Yes. And they need to do that. I think with a couple of other things, they, they need to they need to clarify the chain rasp, uh the barclavs moving. Yeah. Uh, pushing pushing. is a pushing does that count as a move therefore can they move through things yes. when I think they can we've played that, that way I think I think that is the case it's moved with a little M and no action yes so exactly I think, I think, I think had they had GW wanted to make it only when they do a move rather than getting pushed then they would have a special action which would be spooky move or whatever yeah. and it would and say, it would when say the move action exactly yeah. so I think that it does but they do people are going to argue that so it is going to have to be FAQ'd and also, with pushback or not back as well, if you hit that them, isn't. can you knock them through a... Does knocking through a lethal hex do damage to them in that situation? Well, no, because lethal hexes don't count. They ignore lethal hexes. But that's all part of that their move thing. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's all no, part of it. just says uh, they okay. ignore damage uh, caused okay. by lethal hexes and they, they oh, can okay. move through occupied square, uh, uh, hexes okay. and stuff like that. Yeah. So if you have a knock back one, can you knock them back through a blocked hex? Can you knock them through a lethal hex and do damage? Well, it says the fighter treats lethal hexes as normal hexes. And can move through, so I think that's separate. Yeah, but it, again, it's it's all part of the same paragraph. It's not separated, is it? No, but it's the first clause in the sentence. But anyway, I'm not going to go into into English into argument. semantics, <laughs> semantics of it. Again, there's like there's the card with in McGaw's themes where one of them only when they're inspired oh, yeah, do they yeah. not suffer pushback or whatever, and the other one can't be pushed back anyway and, and blah 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 kind so of the thing. difference in, in wording and things is still slightly frustrating and yeah. I really feel like that that should have been nailed down it's uh, a bit like um, you've got a card which says it's a persist card and it gives you plus one dice to your next spell or something but it just says this card persists yeah. it doesn't say till the end of the phase till a spell is cast no it's, it's still a bit woolly yeah and they're not haven't quite nailed down the word. No, and actually, it might be. I mean, it must be until after you've cast a spell. Otherwise, it's better than the upgrade. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but at the same time, it doesn't say that. No, it doesn't. And no. we're only arriving there by process of elimination. Every card should be. You shouldn't have to look at two or three cards to work out what they mean in that card. No. And we're by no means particularly devious people. Speak for but even <laughs> I've been fleecing you for the last year and a half. Oh my god, my bank account's empty. <laughs> I thought you were just being nice asking for my bank details. You said you were going to protect them for me. <laughs> you know, we're not particularly devious people, but even we've spotted fairly quickly some particularly woolly wordings. And woolly I think wording. Woolly, woolly wordings, and they do that need... should be a slot they should. <laughs> on the blog. Woolly wording. <laughs> woolly wording. <laughs> so, yeah, there we go. There's some useless information in that article. There's some... And a nugget of gold at the end. A little nugget right there at the yeah, end. Yeah. That's a full stop for you. <laughs> <laughs> a little golden nugget uh, it's got to be golden hopefully anyway so there you go guys hope that gives you some uh, some things to think about and ponder and scratch your chin thoughtfully over do let us know what you think of the article uh, I think it's quite an amusing article really um, and yeah <laughs> some of it's a bit laughable if we're <laughs> <Yeah>. honest chosen <laughs> uh, actors well the... there's cards <laughs> exactly yeah we're loving the game um, even if the articles are a bit a little bit bizarre we're loving the game Nightfall is uh, really great we've had three games of it now and it's been most enjoyable. Uh, hopefully, we've got some. Well, we have got some more coming up it's soon. Like, it's like putting on a comfy old pair of trousers. It's not that different from the old game, but it's, it's different not. enough with the night. But it's, with the spells are a bit like finding a fiver in the pocket. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, our third game that we just recorded of um, Night Haunts versus Curse Averon's Breakers. Curse Breakers. Yeah, that's an interesting game that you're going to be. You're going to find it very enjoyable coming out next week. Absolutely, and don't forget, Patreon viewers, uh, if you pledge at a higher level, you can get games early. Yep. Uh, we're still playing catch-up pre-October uh, from my being ill, so at the moment um, you can even join and get your money back, I think, can't you? Yes, we yeah. are. We are going to be giving people their money back until we can catch up. So yeah. so join, it's almost free for a little while, so you know, there's no, no real downside there. But if you want more information about the Patreon, it's in the comments below. Yes, do check it out. And if you want to see more talking videos, then uh, do leave a comment below what you'd like to talk, us to talk about if you'd rather never see that again do leave a comment below to the same effect but maybe just make sure it's polite yeah just be nice yeah because we're people we're we not, have feelings we're not devious <laughs> we shall see you soon right. bye, bye.